All right, uh, welcome everyone. Today I'm going to be showing off the fee contract. So just a little bit about the contract. The fee contract is called basically after the block is accepted as the very last transaction in the block. And it takes care of distributing uh, both the block reward and the fees that are spent on gas to the block generator and the provisioners. And as I mentioned in the last demo, uh, gas is basically a unit of computation that you pay for executing a smart contract. And the transaction fee is what you use to cover the gas that you spend. So the fee contract is one of the Genesis contracts. So that means it needs to be uploaded uh, to the blockchain on the very first block. So the fee contract, like the other Genesis contracts, is uh, vital for the proper functionality of our blockchain, just like the transfer contract, also the blind bid contract, and the staking contract. So as for the, the fee contract functions, we have two. Uh, so the first one is distribute. Uh, this function runs every time we accept the block into the blockchain as the very last transaction, like I mentioned. So this function will give the block generator his reward instantly. So you can think of it like a, a coin-based transaction in Bitcoin or Ethereum. And then additionally, for each provisioner that was selected for that round, a little bit reward is allocated to their allowance. Uh, this allowance is basically just a simple balance sheet. Uh, it's kept in the contract storage and it's maintained by the fee contract. So that uh, basically ties into the next function, which is withdraw. Withdraw subtracts a given amount from the allowance of a given provisioner and then sends the money to him in actual dusk. So it, it's turned from basically a number on the contract storage to an actual Phoenix output that then goes to his wallet. So the reason we do it like this, it's basically a conscious design choice for us to save some space in the blockchain. Because if we have a full committee and we would distribute these outputs every single block, that would mean a block would at a bare minimum have uh, 129 transactions, which is a bit much. So this way we can sort of batch them up and then whenever a provisioner wants to take out their, their rewards, they can do so by a contract call. So just before I dive into the demo, a little bit about how set is up. It's very similar to the last one. I have the Golang node running. It has a gRPC client. And then on the other end, I have the Rusk server, which has the gRPC server. And these two will talk to each other. So upon request, Rusk will then load the correct contract and it will start the VM execution. So let me go over to the terminal now and show you guys. Um, over here, I have the Rusk server running. So first, I'll just show you guys the balances for the block generator, which is zero. And for the provisioner, which is also zero. So I'm just using a single provisioner here basically to make stuff simple. Now I'm gonna call into the contract. As you can see here, we're distributing the rewards. So it's the distribute function being called. And now that it's done, the block generator should have 50 dusk, as you can see. And next up, the withdraw function is going to be uh, called and the provisioner will get his reward in turn. Give that a second to get done. And then I will check here. So the provisioner now also has 50 dusk allocated to his wallet. So those are basically the, the two functions from the fee contract. So just a little bit about the future work we have to do for this. First, we will have to do some proper integration with the actual state transition function. So the fee contract needs to receive the actual correct spent gas amounts for all of the contract calls in the block. And this is something that we'll likely have to do mostly on the Golang part. Besides this, there needs to be some stuff done on the transfer contract as well. As I mentioned last time, the gas is properly calculated, but it's not yet being subtracted from the fee. So right now the entire fee output is being consumed. And last off, uh, the two remaining Genesis contracts, the blind bid contract and the staking contract. Once we have those done, we will have all four contracts ready and we will basically have our basic uh, blockchain functionality fully facilitated through the virtual machine. Uh, so that was it. Thanks for joining. Have any questions? I have a question, if that's okay. So provisioners, right, over time accumulate their rewards in, in the contract. Let's say someone becomes a bad actor or we've already kind of slashed their, uh, the stake they put in or something. Does it retroactively impact accumulated rewards or will that always be available to them? 
The rewards that they have already built up will of course be available, but the slashing more so refers to the stake that they have locked up in order mm -hmm. to be a provisioner, which will get taken away from them. And it can also, of course, affect their future participation in the consensus, which will take away future rewards that they might have gotten. All right, but no re retroactive punishment on that. No retroactive reward, punishment right? for now. No, because that's not considered to be part of the stake. So basically, it's already we consider that to be out in the circulation. Yeah, looks really good, and uh, also the format upgrade is huge. Thanks. All right, anybody else has got any any question? Cool. The next demo is going to be about uh, the blind bid and uh, the staking contract, I believe, together. At the moment, they are getting fully developed. Until now, thank you very, very much, everyone, for participating to the demo. Thanks, Jules, for this demo. It was very, very good, and uh, I really like the, the format. Good job.